Well, welcome to the local. I'm not local, but we're going to talk <laughs> local, aren't we? Yes, I'm we Kent Adams, and I'm glad to have you along. And you're? And I'm Connor Sundet. Uh, super stoked to be here with the first edition of our new program, The Local. Right. What are we going to focus on? What kinds of things are we going to focus on? The title might be a hint. It might be a bit of a hint. <laughs> um, it's, it's going to be a lot of local news, things going on in the community that uh, you can either be involved in or just aware of uh, when you're going out to stay safe or maybe something for fun. Yes. Um, you know, if you look at the traditional news that we all see at, in the evening, local news, and this is pretty much the case anywhere you go, of a 30-minute newscast, 18 minutes are news. The rest are promo spots, uh, station spots, advertisers, which pay the bill and, and everything else. And like our conversations that we do, we'll be able to maybe spend a little bit more time on a topic and maybe give what I would call the whole story. Because when you have a minute or a minute and a quarter to do a story, you're gonna leave out things. I don't care how excited you are or how thorough you've researched it. It's just gonna be done, isn't it? That's exactly how it goes. I mean, that can be really anywhere, even the big corporations, you know. Um, you, 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 you get so involved with the story and you maybe start to focus on one thing yeah. a little bit too much and, and that can, this story can suffer for yeah. that. So yeah. getting a fresh lens, that's kind of what we're going to be about. So let, let me ask this so our audience knows who you are. You're graduating in a matter of a couple of months from a little university on the north side called Whitworth. Whitworth University is yes. going to be my alma mater, uh, finishing up here in December with a communications degree. Right. Um, you do something on campus that's kind of unusual, don't you? I do. I'm the general manager for the uh, Whitworth uh, radio program, Whitworth FM. Super okay. simple. Um, www.whitworth.fm. Not an actual radio station anymore. We just yeah. stream it online. We moved to that right. a couple of years well, ago. Well, welcome to the 21st century yeah. here, too. No kidding. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so I'm general manager this this semester. Yes. And uh, kind of sharing duties, but but mostly. It, but it's you me. graduate around Christmas, right? Yeah, around Christmas time, December 17th is going to be my last day. Um, <laughs> it's funny It's funny how the students always know the last day, right? I do know the last day. I'm going to graduate before I can legally drink alcohol. Oh, enough, so. yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, and then you turn 21 in March? In March on the equinox, March 20th. Okay. And then something happens this summer in July. Uh, yes, I am engaged to a lovely lady. Uh, I'm not going to put her on air, but uh, <laughs> we're really excited to be getting married this summer. That's July fun. That's yeah. fun. Yeah, and I can, she's a name. I have not met her yet. I think you're probably afraid to bring her in and hear my bad jokes, but, <laughs> but uh, she has a, la a first name like one of my granddaughters. So it's the one of all our interns and so forth, I can really remember that other person. Out yes. There. So, yes. yeah, we're looking forward to meeting her. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what's going on. Uh, uh, we're all in for laughs, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, um, I am at least. I'm a really okay. big comedy fan. Okay. Um, I do like a lot of the big ones, but um, at Spokane Comedy Club, I know that's uh, that's an A-list. That's what it is. Yes, A yes. Comedy Club. So that yes. means a lot of the uh, when big comedians want to come out and do do comedy. They'll say, I want to only do A-list clubs, which means like the bigger clubs uh, up to arenas even. Right, right. And the Spokane Comedy Club is actually listed as an A-list club. So we which get I don't think the, the public really understands that we get the, some of the very top folks coming through Spokane. In spite of Seattle being 300 miles to our west or Wenatchee, mm -hmm. 200 miles yeah. to our west. I say that because he lives in Wenatchee. Uh, but we, we get them here, don't we? Yeah, it's, I always feel odd that uh, Spokane is the second biggest city in, in Washington. I yes. always think it's Tacoma just because everything's so compact. Oh, sure. Yes. And so and yes. There's, it's more city-like traffic, whereas Spokane's really, really spread out. Right. But population-wise, it, it's second largest. Yeah. And so that surprises me, but that would also lend itself to being the... Uh, to A-list comics. Which so so know. who's coming? Tell, tell us who's coming. Yes. So we've got um, one headliner coming in November from the 4th, the 5th, and the 6th. It's going to be TJ Miller. Uh, he's kind of the comic relief character in Deadpool is what he's really known for. He's also okay. a great player one. A couple other animated movies, but mostly Deadpool. He's the really curly haired guy. Okay. Um, I haven't seen a whole lot of his comedy, but I know a, a lot of friends really enjoy him. He'll be here okay. uh, early in November. But the one I really want to talk about is going to be Tim Dillon. Okay. Um, Tim Dillon, he's got a great podcast, Apple Podcasts, really anywhere. Okay. Um, he'll be here, 
I don't think I have it written down. He'll be here in, I think, October 20th to the 22nd. Okay, okay. So he's coming before TJ. He'll be, yeah, before TJ. TJ Miller's a little more well-known, but okay. Tim Dillon, I think, is something the community can re would really... Well, but if, but if Tim has a so. podcast, he's probably becoming more and more known. He's because been, he that, has, that he doesn't has picked hurt up you, some does traction. It? He has yeah. picked up a little bit of traction. Good. Um, but still, TJ Miller's going to be more in your blockbusters and... And so forth. Uh -huh. But Tim Dillon is uh, he's really brash and he's he has comes out with a lot of opinions. He takes politics and puts that into his comedy. Okay. But he spins it into, into a funny way. But he um, he's also gay. So okay. you can't really pin him in the traditional uh, They're all this side or that liberal. side. It's not this yeah. or that. And he, he can use that to his advantage yeah. with his comedy. And I think that's really beneficial I've for the scene. I've seen a lot recently in some of the trade magazines and others that it's sometimes very difficult to be funny today because mm -hmm. you might be stepping on somebody's toes. You know what I mean? You know, doing a, 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 if you're a white person doing a black joke or vice versa and, and so forth. These are different times from my day when I was your age, uh, which was a century ago, literally, um, from Johnny Carson. Yeah. Who could take on anybody and do anything and nobody, they all wanted to show up and be on his next show. Okay. Yeah. I hope we get past this being so sensitive and that we can have, we can laugh at each other mm -hmm. and ourselves. I, I agree. Um, you'll notice from people who are in the comedy scene or who, who focus on a lot of that or right. even comedians, uh, they're a lot more open to things in, yes. in the shows. I mean, people who I've talked to uh, in community, also friends who are into it. Um, they can make fun of themselves and they can yes. laugh, but it's honestly a lot of the the people who are offended or don't like the comedy are the people who aren't really involved in it, who aren't immersed in that world. Okay. So you'll notice uh, somebody who doesn't watch the show will see a 30 second clip on Twitter or something okay. and, they'll, and they'll be outraged about it, but yeah. they weren't there for the whole context. Yes. They also understand that it's all just to be funny. Right, right. Well, we can <laughs> go from being funny to paying the bills. And so we're going to take a quick time out with our sponsors and we'll be back with more of The Local. This is Dave Reynolds with Source Real Estate. Our secret is our 1% listing fee. All the services, marketing, photography, and more for a 1% listing fee, saving you thousands. May the source be with you. 999-8878 and visit sourcerealestate.com. Spokane Valley's growing. Our population's increased to over 100,000, but we've got to ensure we can absorb and accommodate that growth. We've got to preserve the valley as a great place to live and raise a family, and we do that by growing sensibly with a plan. I'm Rod Higgins, running for re-election to Spokane Valley City Council to remove obstacles to success. And I'm asking for your vote to keep me working for you. Paid for by the committee to re-elect Rod Higgins. There's something going on in Hilliard. What's going on? Well, recently, um, the, Sp the city of Spokane has been licensing out to private uh, companies to tow vehicles that have been parked or are unlicensed. Yes. So yes. Um, a lot of them out in the Hilliard community have just been left. It could be a, a pickup truck, a sedan, or even there's been a few um, campers yes, that have just been yeah. left and out. And people are, that live there complain about that too, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's been a few complaints in the com um, community members just walking down the street and saying, hey, there's this um, broken windshield and this unlicensed car. Well, what's that about? It's parked, been parked in front of my house for about a week. Right. And, um, I don't have his name down. I, I don't want to just throw it out there. No, no. But um, he uh, he came out and he's, it's unlicensed. He tried to get in contact with the with the person who owns it, and it, there's there's just nothing. Yeah. So they, they they've been actually towing these vehicles out. Um, where the bulk of the problem is is out in Hilliard, but it's been all over the city as well. Yes, I've seen that. I've seen the stories, and and we are working on it. Going to be working on a homeless issue story in a couple of weeks that you're going to be out doing as yeah, well, right? Right along. So yeah. we'll we'll cover all that's that's going on. Uh, you recently had one of the things that we you and I have talked about in doing this show is to feature either an in-house guest or a topic. And as much as possible, I think you're going to try to go out in the, into the community and do something out there instead of just having people come in uh, like we do for our conversations all the time. Uh, you had an opportunity last week to uh, meet and talk with uh, Mark Finney. And tell us about that. Yeah, so Mark Finney, uh, he works with an organization called World Relief. Yes. And they house uh, refugees, uh, immigrants who are coming over who are right. struggling 
financial just with nothing they come over the border and they this have themselves and their family and they they have nothing oh, so, a whole different language yeah. and customs and everything else that that goes through. by the way these are uh, uh immigrants that come in who have been vetted through the state department right yeah i think that's interesting to to, mm -hmm. to mention that because we there's some worry out there that just we're, everyone's going to be flooded with no these are folks that have gone through the They'll system gone through the process right. that they're, right. they're, they've been legally allowed to come in so there's there's no worries there which is why world relief specifically reaches out to those right um but world relief they they have uh different resources you can use but they also um, make sure that they, they have a home and they come over. So when right. when someone hops off the, the flight or whatever, yes, um, they'll be at tough. the airport and ready to pick them up. That's tough these days with Spokane's housing market, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you asked that and some other questions with Mark, didn't you? Yeah. Um, we, had a, we had a great sit down talk for about 15 minutes. Um, we just, I just learned a lot about his, about his organization and what he was about. Um, what the whole goal and mission statement of the organization is. And uh, next week, the week after, we'll actually we'll have another interview yes. um, with, with an immigrant refugee who, right. who's over here. But uh, for this week, we just talked to Mark, and that was, that was great. Now, we need to warn people that's going to be, when you go out to do a report sometimes, not everything works. Oh. Right? Okay. <laughs> the, camera, the camera on Mark worked, but the camera on you did not, except it did pick up the audio. Yes. So you're audio, going to be thankfully. asking these questions from off camera, but it was you, right? Mm -hmm. It was me. Uh, unfortunately, the, the camera of the wide shot of me and Mark did get corrupted. So, so that's going to be no good. It'll just be uh, Mark you'll, just the whole time, but I'll be asking the questions off camera because thankfully the audio was untouched. So that's yeah, fine. Yeah. But it, I was able to sit off to the side and and watch and listen. It was a great interview. I learned a lot. I learned a lot. And I think you will too. Great. Nice to be here. Really appreciate the opportunity for the conversation. And we, and we thank you and we're, we're glad to have you. So could you tell our audience who's not super familiar with World Relief, can you tell us a little bit about your organization? Yeah. So World Relief is an international nonprofit we do relief and development work in about 20 different countries around the world, doing things like clean water projects, um, AIDS education, microloans, the kind of stuff that you know helps folks get on their feet in other parts of the world. Here in the U.S., World Relief has 17 different offices in local communities, like the one here in Spokane. And our work here focuses on immigrants who are in vulnerable situations, mostly refugees, um, and but it could be other folks we help you know like DACA recipients or other folks like that who um, who are here and who need a little help achieving the American dream that's why we're here to help them nice um, can you tell us a little bit about maybe your mission statement mm -hmm. uh, I know you kind of went into what you guys do uh, but some more specific things that you guys do other organizations you work with possibly right so we partner with dozens and dozens of other organizations in Spokane uh, including a lot of faith communities. We're a faith-based organization ourselves, And um, our vision is we want to see every immigrant thrive here in Spokane. A lot of folks come here uh, out of a quest to survive. And we say we want to move people from surviving to thriving. And, um, you know, you're going to hear a little bit of Resvan's story here in a few minutes. But we get to work with lots and lots of people who have amazing stories. They've come from places where they're not really allowed to even exist. Many people have fled for their lives because of their religion or their ethnicity or because the government has changed and the government is oppressing their people. And so uh, we get the privilege of standing with them when they first get here, connecting them to the other resources in the community, and then encouraging them to take the passions that they have and invest those into our community. It's a real win-win. We've helped a lot of people who come here and start businesses or start their own restaurants. and. Um, you know, everybody's dream is to be able to be safe and then to yeah. give back. And it's our privilege to walk with folks through that journey. Mm -hmm. What's it like watching people walk through their journey? How does it make you guys feel as an organization seeing people succeed? You know, um, it's, it's really two things. One is it's very humbling because I realize how much I have been given that I didn't ask for, didn't deserve. Being born in this country, being able to just apply for that American passport, and be able to go anywhere I want in the world is something that's easy to take for granted when that's all you've ever known. 
uh, but when you're working with folks who in many cases have never even had the right to vote in their own country mm -hmm. before until they come here and go through the long process to become citizens, uh, it's incredibly humbling. We realize what a gift it is to be Americans, what a privilege we have for living in this community. So that's the first part. The second part is it's just joyful. You know, folks come and they work hard and they appreciate so much everything that they're given. Um, I just think of, you know, uh, we had someone donate a car recently. It was a, it's an older used car. Um, most of us probably wouldn't be super thrilled to, if this was our own car, but it runs. And, um, and when we gave this guy the keys to this car, because he has a job where he can't get there on the bus, so he needed a car mm -hmm. for transportation to keep his job. Um, so we gave him the keys to this car, and I mean, you would have thought he had just won the lottery, you know? Um, and that, that joy we get to see all the time as folks take little things and they appreciate them and they see them grow. That's great. Uh, do you do any work re reaching out to different countries for um, refugees, or do they are they strictly applying uh, through your organization? How does that process work? Great, yeah. So bit. good question. So World Belief, we don't uh, reach out to other countries relative to refugees. We just operate here in the U.S. The U.S. government actually, through the State Department, part of their foreign relations work is to identify groups of people and individuals where it's in the strategic interest of the U.S. to be involved in some of these humanitarian crises. Mm -hmm. And so when the State Department screens and determines who's eligible to come, then they let us know, hey, you've got, you know, in, in the next few months, they told us that we should expect about 300 people from Afghanistan. So our job then is once those folks arrive, we serve them here. But really, we work in close partnership with the State Department and other aspects of the U.S. government who do the overseas work. Mm -hmm. Can you take us through some of the specifics uh specifically to the Afghanistan crisis that's going on right now? Right, so many folks will have heard on the news about you know, the unfolding saga of Afghanistan falling to the Taliban, people being evacuated out um, on a lot of U.S. troop transports. Um, my role, our role at World Belief has been to support the resettlement and integration work when people get here. Uh, but some of that has to do with you know, a lot of technical paperwork mm -hmm. kinds of things. So um, a few weeks ago, I was actually asked by the government, along with others from World Belief, to go to a military base and to spend some time helping process some of the application paperwork and just support the evacuation efforts. So sometimes we do things like that. Most of what we do is, uh, as folks make it through the final screening processes that they're going through, health checks, biometric screenings, paperwork, all that, background checks, um, once they get through that, most of them are on U.S. military bases right now. Mm -hmm. Once they get completed there, then they're going to be sent here and we'll get, we've only been getting about 24 hours notice before people arrive. Wow. <laughs> but once we get that notice, we do our best to jump into action so that when they get here, we're ready to, with a temporary place for them to stay, with, um, you know, to meet them at the airport. We provide them a warm welcome meal when they first get here and then we walk them through the process of everything from what do you expect in Spokane, how's this culture different from what you're coming from, to things like helping the kids get enrolled in public schools, helping the parents get into job training programs and ultimately find jobs. And certainly a big part of it is making sure that we help people find housing, which is really tight now in Spokane, but we have a great network of landlords and property managers that we're working with uh, to make sure that we can put people in you know, affordable and, and safe housing. That's great. Can you tell us a little, about, a little bit about the World Relief team and how, um, how specific members have made a really big impact in, in these people's lives? Yeah, one of the things I love most about working here at World Relief is I get to work with the most amazing team. We've got about 40 staff members and half of them were folks who were born overseas who've come through the immigrant process, many of them refugees themselves. Mm. And so they get the, the, the disorientation that comes when you cross a border, when you have to start your life over in a new society. So that's been, um, it's amazing for me to work alongside of them. Um, as we've had more Afghans that have started coming over the summer and we anticipate even more in the fall, we are, um, we're ramping up our efforts to get more Afghan folks on our staff. And so currently we've got three folks who are from, originally from Afghanistan who are part of our team. 
one of whom is Rez Vaughn. You're going to interview her in just a few minutes. Um, but being able to work alongside people who get the culture, who've come through the journey themselves, is so important to our work. Because we're not here to provide a service to other people. We're here to embody the kind of um, multicultural community that, um, that Spokane is and can be at our best. And we want newly arriving refugees to experience that right here in our office first as we teach them how to live that out in our community. Great. Um, just really quick, we only got a couple minutes left, mm -hmm. but can you tell us about some of the barriers that refugees experience when they come over and how World Relief's uh, people that they've had here before, um, how that is specifically helpful? You know, one of the barriers is just cultures. Cultures are so different. I've had a chance to travel a little bit. I lived in Thailand for a while. And you learn that, yeah, language is different, but then there's just cultural differences. Mm -hmm. You know, things that make sense to us because we live here, but they don't make sense to everybody. You know, for example, why do we go to the grocery store and all the prices are fixed, but when you go to the car lot, you have to negotiate? <laughs> you know, like, that's just the way our culture is, but that's not the way it is in a lot of cultures. And so helping folks adjust to those, those things. Um, another thing that's a challenge is that in Spokane, there's not huge populations from other places. So sometimes when people come, they feel isolated. A big part of our work is providing welcome for them. So we have 40 staff members who do a lot of the technical work of, you know, um, paperwork and forms and orientations. But then we have about 400 volunteers that really provide that welcome in the mm -hmm. community, including mm -hmm. dozens of churches and faith communities. And that's so important for folks when they come to realize they're not just welcome by people from their own ethnic community who already live here, they're welcome by the whole community. And that being an American is not something that you're just born with, but that you can become. Mm -hmm. And that's very different from most of these other places. Many people will have left their country and spent 10 or more years living in a second country where they're not accepted. But when they get here to America, you know, they can become Americans just as much as, as myself who was yeah. born here. And that takes the community effort. That's been a big part of what we really enjoy and appreciate about Spokane in particular. It's a welcoming community. And everybody I talk to says, I feel like I belong here. Within the first couple of years, I feel like I belong because people care. They're w reaching out. They smile at me. You know, my kids make friends in school and the parents are kind. Those kinds of things are awesome. If you want to get involved, whether that's volunteering, uh, we're accepting donations both of, of goods and materials that folks need when they first move here, like kitchen supplies, and financial contributions are also really helpful. So you can visit us at www.worldrelief/spokane to get more information about the work we do and also specifically about our work with Afghan refugees. Thank you for joining us for this interview that we had with Mark Finney. It was very insightful and I'm glad you stayed for the whole thing. If you want to help any way you can, you can go to that web address that we had spliced into the video. Uh, just down below, you can go back www.worldrelief.com, uh, .org actually rather, um, to help out any way you can. But that's it for this edition of The Local. We hope you tune in next week for our exclusive interview with an Afghan refugee. It's a great interview. We hope you stick around for that. This has been the first edition of The Local.